thing, we will not be getting off the trailer. Uh, the uh, presenters will be coming to us. They'll be on either side of the trailer. So those of you on either side will be approached. I'll point where they're going to be, what direction they're coming from. So feel free at any point to stand up and watch because what they have to say. I don't, they don't have microphones, so we'll have to listen carefully to them. Uh, there will be nine stops and there's nine uh, people that will share all of the wonderful information with us. I'm ready when you are, Chatty, or whenever. Okay, we're moving. We are so appreciative of everybody coming out for our first venture, Tombstone Tours. It's a beautiful evening. It, we've worked and planned, and we really hope everything goes well. Actually, be careful on the end of this trailer. Do not fall off. Hang on. And... Uh, we're not going fast, but I don't know that we can come back and pick you up. My name is Rose Blunk. I'm sure all of you know. Actually, the Alva Cemetery was started by an ancient order of United Workmen in 1893. This was a lodge, and it was organized by Alva's first postmaster. And it was Mr. Johnson and Mr. Hatfield. Ten days after the run, a lady died. Can you still hear me? Mrs. Kish. She died in a tent on near the river north of town. There was no cemetery, so the Santa Fe agent and the section men took care of the burial. Mr. Hatfield and Mr. Johnson saw to it that the Alva Cemetery was established very soon. In October, <clears throat> about one month after the First Lady died, a Miss Petra Pollison died at age 22 from typhoid fever. And she was the first one to be buried in the new cemetery. Her stone sits at a 45 degree angle from the other rows, and I will show it to you when we go by. This is what they do. I'll finish in a minute. I'll tell you about that stone in a minute. And here comes Mr. Orange Scott Cummins, known as the Pilgrim Bard. Good evening. I am Orange Scott Cummins, known as the Pilgrim Bard. Okay. My father was a minister, and so he moved around a great deal. And I was born in 1846. And growing up, we were at northern Iowa. And I spent a great deal of time growing up among the Native Americans. So I learned a great deal of their habits, their ways and their traditions. I will write later about those when I began my writing career. When the Civil War started, I joined the Union Army at the age of 17. Because of my experiences with the Native Americans, I was assigned dangerous uh, scouting duties behind enemy lines. After the war, I traveled or wandered around a great deal. To my credit, I was considered one of the founders of Wellington, Kansas, where I was a justice of the peace, but I kept on wandering. I wandered to a location called Lodi in Barber County, Kansas, where I was appointed a U.S. Marshal and given an arsenal of guns in case of an Indian raid. I was told, keep them handy. So I stored them in the back room of my dugout that I shared with my wife. But we kept on wandering. We moved southwest of Medicine Lodge and we opened a tavern, lodge, and general store. Most of our customers were cattlemen and cowboys. And of course they could get their supplies, get a good meal, and place to stay, and maybe something to drink. We called it the Last Chance because it was located on the old cattle trail from Fort Supply, Oklahoma to Honeywell, Kansas, and it was the last chance to get a good meal. 
I built my wife a cute little house, but unfortunately it burned to the ground and we had to start all over again. So I decided to take a chance and we made the Cherokee Strip land run. And I was lucky. I was able to stake a claim on the Salt Fork River at, well, at uh, White Horse, Oklahoma. But I didn't have enough money to make ends meet. I had to do something. So that's when I became known as a bone pilgrim. I covered the prairie hunting for buffalo bones. When the railroads came through, they slaughtered the buffalo for their hides and left the bodies behind. So with a team of horses, I would gather up the bones and take them to Wichita, where they were turned into phosphorus and other stuff. I suspect fertilizer. But on the cold, lonely nights out on the prairie by the light of a campfire or the moon, I began to write my mooslings. I would write on the back of tree bark, on a whitened bone, on a uh, rock, even crystallized gypsum. Now the newspaper editor at Medicine Lodge liked what I was writing and he began to print them and he encouraged me to put them into a book form. The Muslings of the Pilgrim Bar. That's when I got my nickname. Somebody sent a copy of my book to President Theodore Roosevelt who wrote me back how much he enjoyed my work. Now, if you're interested, you can get a copy of my book today on Amazon. Just don't expect it to be autographed. <laughs> now, my wife died before I did, but because of a big flood on the Salt Fork River, we had to bury her up by my mother on land that is now owned by the McCracken family. And once again, I hope you check out Amazon. The estate can use the money. Good evening. Thank you, Pilgrim Bard.